Well, this is one of the things, I was kind of lukewarm initially to lead the certification. I, was, I really wanted net zero, that's what I care about. But Stephanie Radcliffe of the Wild Center sort of said, Larry, you really should consider lead certification, which of course the Wild Center did. And uh, the more I got into it, the more I got enthusiastic about it. What Larry has done here is chosen to meet that standard. And so what my role is, is to help everyone that's involved with the project understand the requirements. And it's broken up into several categories, but all those categories associated with different aspects of a green building. There's a lot to it. I mean, the book is thick and you've got to read through there. Lead certification requires an independent appraisal by an independent lead auditor, if you will. So we hired a firm in Massachusetts to do the certification and she came up initially and we walked through all the manual and looked at what points we thought we might be able to get. And we were right on the borderline of the two highest categories. Lead Platinum is the highest level and then Lead Gold is just below that. And well, we wanted Lead Platinum since we were right on the cusp of getting it. Uh, a lot of those just don't make sense here. There's points associated with irrigation that would make a lot of sense in Arizona. No, they don't force us to do that and it doesn't make sense to do that, so we're not going after those, after those points. Which starts with where are you building? Was it previous developed? Are you taking uh, raw land and now making it developed land? And it looks at whether you're far from transportation. Will goods and services have to come far to you? So it's a very kind of a very uh, uh, big picture look at what's going on. Looks at where the materials came from and how far. Is there recycled content? Was it reused? Can it be reused after its life? And also, uh, the builder, of course, had to ask suppliers of lumber yards, well, where did you get your material? And they were never used to ask that, <laughs> answering that question. In some cases, they weren't quite sure. <laughs> So at the end of the day, we, there's about 10 points that we have to play with. And to be platinum, we have to get every, every point that's, that's accessible to us. It asks you to minimize the amount of waste involved with the project. It asks you to use reclaimed, recycled products. It asks you to uh, uh, use, if you use new wood, to have it sustainably harvested. All these are wonderful things. And uh, use also no VOCs, all the finishes such as there are, you try to minimize or have no VOCs. And the workmen, that was one of the best parts of the project because the workmen were so, wow, they were initially skeptical, but then when they didn't have to smell the stuff they normally smell when they're putting finishes on, they were really happy about this. We're using reclaimed, recycled uh, uh, doors, any kind of millwork. You know, rather than throw it away, we've, we've stored it away in barns. We've got barns full of stuff. Yeah, so a lot of the materials, the floor in this room is uh, was reclaimed from old factories and barns uh, by a company that specializes in this, Pioneer Millworks. Uh, all the interior doors uh, were part of the Old Lake Plastic Club. And the main, one of the main components is energy usage. We thought we could get there with no problem with that because we're building a net zero building and that almost inherently is going to give you a high rating in the lead system but there's also all these other factors. Keeping things on schedule that that's the hardest thing is when is staying ahead of the materials that you'll need so that you, you don't have uh, an adhesive that has too high a VOC and all of a sudden you can't you know, put a floor down and you have to in, the, the, in order to do the wall you have to put the floor down in the whole construction sequence. I think those are the biggest things and as long as you stay on top of it and you're aware of what needs to be ordered, what the job schedule is, you just have to be more disciplined than on a, t than a typical project. Like metal doors, stamp metal doors. Well, we got, we got In the garage we've got one and down in the root cellar we've got one. Simple door, buy it at Lowe's off the shelf, you know, a couple hundred buck. But it sounds simple, but when you look into it, they're all made in Indiana and North Carolina, outside of our range. So we had to, we finally found a company in Canada that's in Ontario that made them. So we had to buy them from them. One thing that came up recently with one of the was with Alan Preston, the plumber. I explained to him that we, there was four credits associated with having limited distance for a circulation loop for hot water in, the, in, in pipes, and. What I learned from LEED is what they're looking for is not to have a lot of hot water in pipes running through the house, just sitting there idle circulating. We found a way to reduce some of the branch lines from a half inch to three eighths, and then they can be 20 feet long instead of 10 feet long. Uh, we also are using two different branch, uh, two different circulation loops instead of one large circulation loop. And additionally, we have a requirement for motion sensors in the bathroom. So 
the circulation loops will only kick on if people are in the house, if people are in the bathroom. There's things that we thought we were going to get credit for, we didn't. And uh, then there were things we didn't think mattered and it made a big difference. To get the full points that we're, that we're going for, we're collecting 51% of the roof area into cisterns. And that worked out because half of the water falling on the roof goes into two cisterns that gravity feed our garden. And then the driveway needed to be an impermeable surface or, or otherwise control the, the, the runoff. And we decided to go with paving stones that are permeable and same with our front walk. One of the most interesting things about the waste stream that's different on this project, which we're required to do for LEED, is to break everything down into metals, plastics, uh, uh, wood. On a typical project, almost none of that would end up anywhere but the, land, but the landfill. When you look in the dumpster, it's fascinating. You just see that, that those are, it's, it's the packaging that, that really is, is the only thing that is really getting thrown out here. All the wire, the leftover wire scraps, uh, the stonework, all that stuff is integrated back into the project. And it gives a third party rating to the house. So we can say we did this, we did this. This is a confirmed thing. The house is inspected, the plans are approved, it gets tested several times during construction. In the end, the stamp of approval basically says we did all these things, we didn't just claim to do all these things. So there's a value in it for that. And it, it brings immediate attention to it. I don't think there's been a lead uh, project uh, in this kind of climate, and there hasn't been a net zero lead project in this climate, certainly. So green building starts out with a, a, um, a kind of a assumption that um, if at all possible, we should build in a way that doesn't deplete resources for future generations. We live in a finite world and resources uh, are more and more limited every year. And so managing those resources, whether it's materials or energy, is just part of the natural progression. And I think that's in large part why it's taking off.